this lesson, we will go uh, into a little bit more detail about workflow rules. So as you may know, workflow rules are a way to uh, automate a few tasks within Autotask. And it's a really cool feature to um, yeah, just save you time. And um, yeah, let's, let's just take a look within Autotask and it'll, it'll explain itself. So what you want to do is you want to go uh, to the menu in the top left corner, go to admin. And as you can see, it's one of the commonly used features right here. So we can click on it. It'll open the workflow rules screen. So as I've said before, it's a way to automate different kinds of tasks within Autotask. And let's just show you what I mean. So let's say I want to automate a task within Autotask. Let's just uh, click on new right here for the service desk. And let's just make a uh, workflow rule. So as you can see, you can just give the workflow rule a name right here. So let's just give it a name right now. I will, I will use test because it'll be a test for right now. And you can give it a description so it'll, it'll easily be findable. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just quite handy. Certainly if multiple people are making workflow rules or if like a lot of time has passed, then it's, just really easy to give it a description because then you you always know what the meaning of the workflow rule is or um, yeah why why the work workflow rule was made. So as you can see, workflow rules can be event based and the event different events can either be for example a ticket has been created or edited, some kind of activity has expired, or it even can be time based. For example, if a ticket is idle for, for example, three days, then set the status to something else. That's just an example of time-based workflow rule. And as you can also see, you can also make uh, SLA-based workflow rules. For example, if an uh, SLA were to almost be breached, you might want to set a uh, workflow rule to remind the tech that, that he has to start this ticket, or you might want to set a workflow rule that's, that will notify the team lead or something like that. And you can also set workflow rules, for example, for change requests. So for example, um, when a change has been approved or rejected, uh, you might want to notify someone. Or um, for example, if a change approval is requested, you might want to notify someone of the change board. And there are also two miscellaneous uh, items which can start off a workflow rule. For example, if something is added to the work list or if the service thermometer rating is submitted. So these are um, in the in this event box. These are all kind of triggers for the start of the workflow rule. And after you've selected the right kind of trigger, what you can do is you can give certain kind of conditions to the workflow rule. So, for example, we might want to um, start the workflow rule off by if a ticket is created by anyone or even uh, we can select here different kind of things. So we might want to select instead of anyone, uh, if a ticket is created by an Autotask resource, or if a ticket is created by a client portal user. So um, yeah, let's let's just go with that one. Let's say if a ticket is created by a client, client portal user, and then we can give it a condition. So, okay, for example, following conditions are met. So let's say, for example, well, as you can see, we have all, all kinds of different attributes here. And it's just, you can just search for the, for the attributes you want. And it'll just be a really easy way to just give certain kind of conditions. So if, let's say, for example, if the, if a ticket is created by the, by a client portal user and the issue type is equal to, um, let's say, uh, choose issue, then, uh, you might want to put in a update that, for example, let's say the ticket category is standard instead of for example, one of these kind of changes or um, the ticket category might be set to um, uh, standard minimal fields. This, so as you can see, there are different, there are a lot of different options here and you can just play with it a little bit. And we would definitely advise you to play with it a little bit. It's 
a little bit hard to give you really a lot of examples because a lot of workflow rules are definitely uh, process based. So they're dependent on the kind of processes you have within your own company. But uh, to give you a little bit of an idea, we have a few uh, workflow rules set up here. So I will go through them in a minute. Let's just finish off this first workflow rule, which we were busy editing. So as you can see, you can um, also select here time sensitive. For example, if you only want to uh, fire this workflow rule within business hours, or if we only want to fire this workflow rule outside of business hours or custom hours or some something like that. Furthermore, there are certain kind of actions that you can take. So for example, you can send a survey to a ticket contact or transfer the ticket to, for example, uh, task hire or stuff like that. You might want to uh, activate an extension call out or um, you might want to add items from a checklist or stuff like that, or even add the tickets to the primary resources work list. And as you can see underneath, there are also different kinds of actions like create a to-do or create a ticket note. And well, if everything is filled in correctly, then you also get the option in the second tab to send out a notification to certain kind of people. So you might want to send a no notification to, for example, the primary contact or the primary contact of the parent account. Or you might, for example, want to send out a notification to the primary resource or to the account manager or stuff like that. It's really flexible and you can also send Send notifications to, for example, work groups. So, for example, if you have a client team or if you have some sort of other teams, then you might want to send a notification to those kind of teams. And if none of the above is applicable, but you might want to send it to another email, then you can fill it out right here in the middle of the screen and you can just type, the, type in the email address or you can even send an SMS notification or stuff like that. So yeah, it's really cool. And as you can see, you can also choose the notification template. So for example, I want to use a specific template instead of, for example, the normal template. I might want to use a template, for example, for the um, critical ticket notification. I can just select it here and it'll use that template. And I can even uh, change the email subject right here in this screen. And as you can see, you can just use the different kind of attributes you can also use within the uh, notification templates. So for example, we have the attribute ticket number right here. And as you can see, it'll just fill out the ticket number and we have ticket title right here. So it'll just um, be the same as any notification templates. You can also set some kind of recurrence for the notification and create a note from the notification content. So it's really, really flexible. You can just do a lot of different things with it. So let's just take a look at a few example workflow rules. Um, let's go back to the previous screen. As you can see, we have certain kind of workflow rules. For example, if we have tickets, which are, for example, due in three business days or overdue, and they are in the following queue, the on hold queue, then when they are close to being due, then we want to put the ticket back within the client portal and set the status back to acknowledged. That's one for the on hold queue. Another workflow which is really interesting is the service call cancelled workflow rule. As you can see, when a service call is cancelled and the status is, is not complete or out resolved from the ticket, then we want to set the status back to schedule so we can make a widget on the homepage, on the dashboard. And we can just get our dispatcher to use that, that widget to reschedule the service calls which need to be rescheduled. We can also use it, for example, to send a survey to the ticket contact, or we might want to send a notification when a note is added by the resource and stuff like that, or for example, the auto resolved. By RMM, what we want to do is we want uh, tickets with the ticket category Dato RMM alert and the status equal to out resolved. We want to set the UDF to out resolved to yes, and we want to set the status to complete. So yeah, like when a ticket is out resolved by RMM, but it's reopened again and the UDF is still set to out resolved yes, that might give us a sign that we need to link look a little deeper into the cause of these problems and just go troubleshoot a little bit a uh, little bit deeper 
Okay, so well, that's workflow rules explained a little bit more in depth for you. And our advice is to just play with it a little bit. And as I've said, these are only for the service desk. You also have workflow rules, which are possible for projects, contracts, and CRM here at the top. Uh, as you can see, there are different kinds of tabs here at the top. So you can just play with them a little bit and just take a look at all the business processes you have going on right now and see how you can make them a little bit easier or automate some stuff.